Why not talk about? Why not talk about? Talk about money. Hey everyone, we are back and we are talking about money this week. Uh, you're listening to Why Not, which is a casual conversation between friends who are just naturally curious about everything that goes around uh, in the world. And we are not experts, uh, not all of us anyway, but when we need an expert, we call them in. So, <laughs> I'm Nari, uh, and I'm joined by... Lena and Isaac. And I'm Isaac, yes. <laughs> and today is one of those, like, need to have an expert days. Yes, definitely. So, we'd like to introduce to our studio, Bruce. How you doing, Bruce? Hi, everyone. Happy holidays. Yeah. I'm Bruce Hahn. Huh? Uh, I guess I'm the finance expert. I've been yes, working yeah. for 31 years and six months now, across cool. all the asset uh, classes. So... I would rather much talk about Blackpink or Mama Moo, but today we're going to talk about money. <laughs> I mean, we can money, talk money, about money, 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 money. <laughs> oh, Bruce is fun. <laughs> nice. I'm sorry. Did you say 31 years in the finance sector? And six months. Wow. And six months. Yeah. That's very important. I think so. <laughs> okay. So today, if you haven't guessed already, money is the key topic. And what is our leading question, Bruce? Now. What in the world is going on at the Federal Reserve Bank in the U.S.? What's quantitative easing? What's tapering? Mm -hmm. It's also confusing, right? Mm -hmm. Let's make some sense of this. This is... This is... This is Arirang Radio. And investors are watching to see when the Federal Reserve will start winding down its asset purchases, which have helped the American economy through the pandemic. Reports say... It Moving on to other news, it has emerged that policymakers at the Federal Reserve broadly agreed last month that the Fed should begin reducing its enormous bond buying program and start tapering from as soon as mid-November. The minutes of the Federal Open Market Committee's September meeting were released Wednesday, showing they agreed a gradual tapering process that concludes around the middle of 2022 would be appropriate. I hear a whole bunch of words, <laughs> but I don't understand all the terms. Now relax, relax. Okay. This is fun. So, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. fun. It's fun. You know, Bruce, every morning we throw around a lot of these econ jargon thinking mm. like, yes, our listeners completely understand. Mm -hmm. We are not on the same page. Okay. Let's, let's, talk, <laughs> let's make it easy. So everyone's talking about this right now, right? So they say quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. So let's stick to just QE mm. to make it simple. Oh, so, that's much easier. Yeah. So basically quantitative easing or QE means that the central bank. So in the U.S., it's Federal Reserve Bank. In Korea, it's the Bank of Korea. They've been buying lots of government bonds mm -hmm. or treasuries mm. or corporate bonds and even stocks. And this simply, this simple decision triggers powerful outcomes. The amount of money circulating in the economy increases, and this helps uh, interest rates to go lower. And when this happens, it lowers the cost of borrowing, which spurs economic growth. So people can go out and buy apartments. Mm. Uh, not me. I don't have any money. But <laughs> I was going to say, where? Where can we buy an apartment? <laughs> not in Seoul. <laughs> Maybe you guys. But anyway, so you could open your own stores or restaurants, right? And also because interest rates are falling, it's mm -hmm. lower, people can buy stocks. They mm -hmm. switch. Uh, they need to make more money. So that makes the stock market go higher. Mm. So confidence in the economy and society grows. Businesses and consumers borrow money. They invest in the stock market, hire more employees, and spend more money. And all this stimulates the economy. That's a good thing, right? I think so. But, but there's a downside to this. Too much QE causes inflation. I mm -hmm. think we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And that's a big problem right now. And so tapering is going to take place. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wait, can I ask you a question? Yes. So back to uh, QE, starting with like where the government or where they buy, central banks buy government bonds. Yes. Uh, before they do that, who is normally buying these government bonds? Institutional investors. Okay. So mm -hmm. some of the biggest buyers of uh, U.S. Treasuries mm -hmm. are like China, even oh. Korea, Bank of Korea. They have mm. a huge U.S. Treasury position, and even Japan, Taiwan. So the Asian countries are some of the biggest holders of U.S. Treasuries. Oh. So are they not buying right now? Is that why the Fed is buying it? They are buying it, but the Fed, to lower interest rates, yeah. they're 
pushing the process harder. We're pr- pushing it harder. So they want to. They bought more to drive down the interest rate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I have a question. Yes. So is the same? Is it is QE the same thing as printing money? Because I've seen those memes where like pretty much yeah. people yeah. are talking about printing money. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Much. yeah. Making it rain. <laughs> That's right. So in, if you look at 2020 in the U.S., uh, COVID money it was 1.9 trillion dollars. That represented 20% of all the U.S. dollars circulating in the economy in 2020. Wow. So we're not we're at the end of 2021, so we don't know the numbers yet. But that shows you why there's so much inflation now. It's a mm-hmm. lot of money chasing mm-hmm. a lot of things. Yeah. But it's not exactly the same thing, right? I mean, the government could easily just print more money, but why do they actually go into QE then? What's the benefits of you know investing back with tax money, I assume, right? Well, good question. So... What's going on is that the government needs to do financing, right? Right. So they need to issue bonds, and to make they need to make sure that people show up to buy bonds, mm. right? And so there's a lot of political things going on right mm. now. Mm-hmm. So whereas in the past they were relying on China to do so, mm. Mm. so just to fill the gap, maybe they're doing this. Yeah, because I think Lena, you know, that is a good question because people like. Uh, most people probably know that when they do when they do see those memes of you know printing yeah. money, it's not actually they're printing all this money. Mm. Uh, but I've been asked that too. Like I've been asked yeah. by a friend, like so, how much money are they actually printing? And I'm like, oh well, they're not actually printing money. So mm. this is like where the <laughs> the normal people, yeah, 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 where the average yeah. person um, they have that kind of like they really don't know, right? Yeah, so thank you for that. <laughs> that kind of like clears well, everything up. Is, it's easy for the, the gov- U.S. government to do so because mm-hmm. the U.S. Treasury is the only institution that can print U.S. dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. You can do that, but you're going to get arrested. It's called <laughs> forgery. <laughs> right? It's called forgery. You can't do that. I can't do that. It's only the Treasury that, that can do that. Right? Yes. And so technically, the U.S. bond market, the Treasury market, mm. is the most perfect market in the world. It cannot go bankrupt. It can't. Mm-hmm. You can't go belly up because they just print more money. You, you know? can't go bankrupt, but money's value can depreciate significantly. That, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, yeah. that's the basis of inflation and right. why consumer prices are a concern. And I do wonder because uh, last year, borrowing rates in Korea, too, mm-hmm. to borrow money was cheaper, essentially, right? That's right. Which meant that people are investing more, and that's good. If you made money, I'm investing in stocks, that's a good thing. But... You know, I do wonder, because for those who borrowed money, they didn't have to invest in something like homes in Korea, for example. Next, Come next year, they're going to have to, you know, maybe pay more to just be, be able to afford the same house, essentially, right? That's right. Uh, th- the thing that bo- bothers me a little bit that I'm concerned about is that a lot of people borrowed money to pay off their debts mm, yep. or to buy cryptocurrency, oh, that too, yeah. digital digital assets, or stocks, especially mm. the younger generation. So mm-hmm. if you look at the statistics coming out of the securities companies right now, mm. the people in their 20s and 30s are the ones who are doing all this. Mm. So if you look at, um, I don't know if your viewers are familiar with like Hyundai Department Store. Mm-hmm. Where they sell high brand things. Yeah, They recorded, I think, one billion US dollars worth of sales, sales? this sales? year. Wow. Most of them are in their 20s. Mm. They're catering oh, wow. to their 20s and 30s right now. Right? Where are they getting all this money? I know, money? I was going to say, like, are they <laughs> rich or they're just borrowing? They're literally rich, just going rich, into debt to maybe buy rich yeah, mommies and credit daddies. Cards, like, Moms and they're dads. just running up credit card debts? Moms and dads. The thing that's really worrisome huh. is that uh, the IMF did a survey. Yeah. The people who kids, uh, young people, mm-hmm. ranging from 18 to 29, their first asset class purchase is cryptocurrency. Mm. But they're doing it with student loans. The credit card, we're just going to debt. So that's the oh. really worrisome. 18 to 29. Isn't that like rule number one when you go into investing? You don't mm-hmm. invest in money that you don't necessarily have. <laughs> if you're if you're an investor, you know, a single investor, that mm-hmm. is just, you know, going solo. I think in Korea, that shows more maybe fear or desperation among younger mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. You know? well, that, but that's they're pretty savvy, though. Uh, when I didn't have money, I just didn't know how to invest it at all. But like, yeah. they, they, they're there if they don't have money, but they found a way to invest because they're smart enough or savvy enough to know that I, that's where... Isaac, they're savvy. Um, tapering, actually, is the complete opposite of QE. Mm. Okay, So what's going on is that the Fed feels that the economy is strong enough now to roll back the stimulus that they provided. Yep. So the Fed will start to reduce uh, bond purchases by $15 billion a month. And they should be able to wrap all this up by mid next year. So tapering means just not buying. 
So why is everyone? Why does it matter what the Fed is doing for like the rest of the world? For Korea, for instance, like why are we so set on like that? Because uh, the United States is still the most powerful country in the world, <laughs> uh, number number one. And oh, to, thanks, Bruce. Got it. <laughs> okay, to uh, pat the Bank of Korea on their back, yeah. on its back. It was the first developed. Uh, uh, it was the first central bank in a developed country to raise their interest rate this, year. this past August, yeah. right? So. They had a clue. They knew what was going on. Mm. It was only recently that the U.S. Federal Reserve Governor, Mr. Powell, Mm -hmm. said inflation wasn't transitory or temporary. Mm -hmm. So Korea was ahead of the curve. When they were throwing around the I word in like hushed tones, like, oh, this is a temporary thing. But I I guess Bank of Korea knew. Well, if you go out and buy milk or eggs or cucumbers, you know it's not. Oh, cucumbers. What is it, like a hundred something percent raise or something? Really? Like something like that. So yeah. expensive. It's like unaffordable. No wonder I haven't had a cucumber in like well, <laughs> I know. months. Isaac, don't, don't knock cucumbers. I love cucumbers. cucumbers. I love cucumbers. Me. I'm trimmed now because I've been eating cucumbers. Oh, I love summer. cucumbers too, man. <laughs> I do. That's why you don't see I them just, at home anymore. Yeah, I, I was wondering why. I, was, I, was, I just figured, you know, out of season, you know, <laughs> it's, it's me. cold. No, cucumbers turn to ice or something, you know. No, like no, it's me. I've been eating it. That's why I'm so svelte now. Nice, nice. Now that we've established that all the cucumbers are gone because of Bruce. Of course, we joke, <laughs> but um, we want to move on to the next segment because inflation has to do with the economy. Like it's such a big part, and of course, tapering. You told us how it will affect um, inflation, um, and right now, <laughs> what's happening, Nari? I'm no, sorry. It's... No, I was just thinking about um, cucumbers still. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Yes, if you have just tuned in, you are listening to Why Not Money uh, with Lena, Isaac, Nari, and Bruce. Uh, Bruce, tell us what's coming up next. We're going to talk about inflation infamy. It's the station to listen to. Arirang Radio. Inflation has been making headlines around the world, and though prices have been rising in Korea, too, the country's finance minister says he'll work to keep it at around 2% and will not let Korea fall into stagflation, meaning inflation combined. The policymakers also signaled a strong likelihood of interest hikes coming next year, which would be the first since the Fed slashed short-term borrowing costs to near zero in March 2020. U.S. inflation has hit a figure that hasn't been seen for 40 years. The country's labor statistics released on Friday show that inflation rose 6.8 percent in November on year. The impact is likely to be more critical to those on lower incomes with soaring prices across food, gas and housing. Significantly, November's gasoline prices rose more than 50 All right, I think the obvious question that I will probably ask since I am not very econ savvy. What is the easiest way you can define inflation? Okay, so great question. What is inflation? Basically, it means a lot of money chasing st- stuff to buy, which mm. drives up the prices. Mm. Okay, so high inflation can be the result of a hot economy, mm. right? One in which people have a lot of surplus cash or accepting a lot of uh, credit and want to spend. Mm-hmm. And there's also inflation because of high oil prices, okay? I don't drive, but my wife complains about it all the time. And also, <laughs> bottleneck in supply chain, which keeps uh, you know, goods in short supply, which also drives up the prices. Mm-hmm. Now, Jerome Powell, okay? He's not the most savvy central banking head that I've seen in a long time. He made a huge mistake just a couple of months ago saying that inflation was transitory. And mm-hmm. Transitory means temporary, right? Mm-hmm. We all realized that was not true. Now, he, fortunately, he made a quick turnaround, and he said it is not, and that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates probably at least three times next year. Okay? Now, I don't know how he missed it. Um, in the U.S., inflation is now 6.8%, as, you, as we just heard, as mm-hmm. of November. That's the fastest increase since 1982. Wow. In Korea, mm-hmm. it's, it's high also. For Korea, it's around 3.7%. This means that the Bank of Korea, Korea Central Bank, will also raise interest rates next year. And as I mentioned earlier, Korea was the first developed country to raise interest rates uh, this summer. So credit, you know. Credit so where it's due. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Because, um, you know, you said you don't know how you missed it. 
I, I wonder, do, do you think he lied? No. No? He, he didn't lie. So okay. there's, there's always different camps. Because, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, I'm suspicious. Like, right. how if he's, you know, at that position, how could he Miss not, it? yeah, how could he not know yeah. or at least run the models, I would imagine, you know, like of all the possibilities, but right. at least he, he fixed it quickly, right? He, he right. kind of turned around and pivoted, but. No, he, I don't think he okay. lied. There's, there's lots of really smart people, analysts, and you have different views, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you think X stock will go down, mm-hmm. I might think it won't go down. Yeah. So, we had different views, but the numbers were just too strong. Gotcha. We just could not dismiss it anymore, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So, for Eurozone, let's talk about, let's stop talking about Korea and the United States for the time being. So, okay. for the Eurozone, mm-hmm. inflation is above 3%. Mm. And let's talk about emerging markets. One of my favorite countries in emerging market land is Brazil. And Brazil is 9%. Okay, that's a lot. Mm. And I'm not going wow. to reveal my age mm. by telling you when Brazil's <laughs> monthly inflation, inflation rate was like 20 to 30%. Wow. This is a long time ago. It's true. Seriously. Yeah? Seriously. So what causes inflation? Right. Okay, a few things. Number one, oil price, right? Mm-hmm. So most oil analysts are expecting oil price to rise to 90 to to $100 a barrel next year. There's a supply you know, uh, and uh, demand issue. Second, everyone knows this, supply chain problems. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of demand but difficult to transport, so everything becomes more expensive, mm. right? And then I'm, what I mentioned earlier, in the U.S., there's increased demand because there's a lot of money because the government gave out a huge stimulus package. Mm-hmm. $1.9 trillion of uh, relief last year. Right. I, wish, I wish I got some of that, but I didn't. <laughs> so 20% of U.S. dollars in cir- circulation in 2020 was created that year. That's huge. That's mm. humongous. And, but emerging markets, we have to be sympathetic. Emerging markets uh, have it far worse. Extreme weather has led to crop shortages, mm. okay, and making yeah. food more expensive. Mm. Many poor people cannot put staple food on their foods on the table. So what? So what staple food for Asians is rice. Mm-hmm. Right. For them, it's you know rice also, but bread and cheese. Mm. Right. So for poor people, food and fuel are the large parts of their expenditure. Mm. So going back to Brazil again as an example, their staple foods are black-eyed pe- beans, and up forty percent. Soybean oil, 68%. Mm. Cabbage price, up uh, 76%. But you guys, is, yeah, it's yeah, severe. You, wow. you guys look scared. Relax. Yeah. Relax. So, <laughs> no, I can't. Okay. I mean, those are staggering no, numbers. Yeah, but no need to panic. Interest rate hikes in general are not something to be overly concerned about as long as it's done in an orderly fashion. And so that's what the Federal Reserve Bank is doing. That's what Bank of Korea is doing is too, mm-hmm. right? They're signaling to mm-hmm. the market that we're going to do this. We're going to take care Hike of Hike the interest rates, right? That's right. And they're going to slowly... Little by little. Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. So we'll probably have th- a few next year and then a few after that in mm-hmm. 2023, right? Now, when you look at past interest rate hikes, stocks more than often tended to go higher for the f- one year after mm. the first interest rates hikes, right? Mm. Um, but one thing that we also have to talk about when we talk about inflation is the opposite, deflation. Right? Mm. So, so what? Wait, how is that different from disinflation? What? I what? Never, what's this? Disinf- Did dis- you just information? Dis- dis- disinformation? Oh, I don't know. I actually, I was reading an article and it said, oh. um, it there was a term disinflation, and I was like, I don't I even know. think that's like. Are a they real coining word. new terms now? It could be. I don't they're, know. They're, they're mining. They're mining for Bruce. Go to your catchphrase. Well, yes. I know another term. Flag, oh. flag station. Stagflation. Blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> something <laughs> with a stagnate. Okay. Something. Is that what? Stagflation. So Everyone, calm down, Bruce. That's let's let's up new words. So, Nari, I don't know. So, mm-hmm. if I don't know, mm-hmm. it's not important. Oh. <laughs> don't forget. Mike drop. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So, simple. Simple answer. That's right. What's deflation? Mm-hmm. Simple. Simple definition. It's a general decline of the price level of goods and services. Prices are going down. Okay, so deflation is a sign of a weakening economy, right? And economists fear deflation because falling prices lead to lower consumer spending. Mm-hmm. And that's a major component of economic growth. Like in the U.S., like 35% of economic growth mm. comes from consumer spending. Mm-hmm. I don't think they have to worry about that now, right? So companies respond to falling prices by they slow down production. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. and that leads to layoffs and salary reductions, right? It's a vicious cycle. It is. Japan and is still going through it. Yeah. So Japan's inflation rate, I think the recent numbers are like minus zero point seven percent. So they don't oh. have to worry about inflation. Right? And then stagflation, mm. right? That is um, a perfect storm of a few things coming together at the same time: mm-hmm. low, slow economic growth, high inflation, and high unemployment. I don't think we have to worry about that f- for the time being, but 
businesses hate stagflation because it means you know they have to lay off employees to save money, which in turn decreases the purchasing power of consumers, which means less consumer spending and even slower economic growth. So stagflation is another fear that comes up when inflation is high mm. in a period of slow economic growth. But I, I haven't met anyone who fears stagflation at this point. Mm. At this point. Mm. Yeah. You know, maybe that'll change going forward, but at this point, I haven't met anyone. Okay. So then is, is deflation the, the number one fear of like maybe Any what's coming watchers? next? I have not heard anyone worrying about, about, about deflation at this not yet. point. Okay. Not, not yet. Oh. Is that because economic growth outlook in the coming year is a little bit more promising? Yes. Mm-hmm. Like for Korea, it's, uh, they're expecting yeah. 3.1% growth. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's really interesting because inflation in, in turn tells me that you know, maybe people won't be spending as much, but that's not the case, right? Going to next year, we're actually yeah. expecting people to spend right. more despite inflation. Right. So the thing that really concerns me is yeah. that Koreans, especially, they, mm-hmm. they borrowed a lot of money to buy flats, apartments, right. right? their homes. And so Korea's um, consumer debt ratio is one of the highest in the world, mm. as you know. So the thing that concerns me is that if interest rates rise, mm. 75% of the mortgage loans that they took out mm-hmm. are linked to floating rate notes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what that means is when the inflation rise, the amount of money that they'll be paying each month will rise with it, will increase with it. Mm. And so that's one of my concerns, too. You know, you know but can't you choose whether you want a floating or fixed mm. rate? Mm. Good question. But I think because interest rates have been so low for such a long time, mm. right? They thought, oh, oh rates aren't going to go up. Oh, well, so they went with floating. That's right. Okay. Floating rate now. And w- at the time when they chose between floating and fixed, the, n- the number for the floating rate note was much lower than fixed rate. Oh, that's why. What's I safer, say. just on a general, like, just generally, yes. you should always go with just like a fixed rate, right? Because you never know what happens? No, I think it depends. I think um, it doesn't, you don't have to have a PhD in economics from Berkeley or MIT. Just mm-hmm. read the newspapers, keep mm-hmm. your eyes open. So if you think there's going to be, the economy's not good, there's a lot of, you know, crisis, there's problems, yeah. like COVID or now Omicron. If you think that interest rate is going to be low, go for floating rate now. Because you could always, you know, uh, refinance, right? The fixed rate later. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, is it, so is that a possible solution right now for all those people with the household debt in, in a floating rate mortgage? Right. Can they refinance? They, um, are the banks a lot harder? Uh, well, that's a good question. The banks are sort of getting credit savvy now to, towards retail. And also when, as you know, if, if someone re- yells fire in the in the cinema, uh, sorry, yeah. in America, it's movie theater. Movie theater. They all rush for the exit, mm-hmm. then people are going to trample, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. So I think maybe if you're going to do it, you should do it before everyone decides to do it together. Mm. Mm. Is that a recommendation that you do it earlier <laughs> than... That's a good tip. I don't own a home. I'm yeah. Yeah. poor, so <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, so um, besides... Uh, so I have a question. The interest rate, so if... The interest rates, if they are nice and easy, you know, a very nice slope, a very gradual slope, that's okay. But right now we're worried about like this quickening hike, right? What if it happens, like everything happens just too fast? What if it goes up too fast? And um, and this term, greenflation. What? What is happening? <laughs> okay, this is a real <laughs> term that I did read about on uh, Yana before <laughs> before our show, oh. and it's it's what um, people Yana. are worried about. It's about uh, the sudden shortages of supplies that are needed for a greener economy. Like we're trying to go towards a greener economy, right, right. but in order okay. to do so, we're the things that we need, like natural everything's, resources. Everything's in short supply. So it's basically supply so chain stuff for like clean energy, right? Supply issues specific to the green economy. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's a very specific. Don't term. say it, Bruce. <laughs> don't say. Don't give me your catchphrase. No, 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 no. I'm not, no I, I think. Hey, Bruce doesn't know. <laughs> if I don't know, <laughs> it's not but important. Clean energy is important. It's important. No, no, that's very important. ESG is the catchphrase for yeah. this year. Oh yeah. But that's more. It's like metaverse. Right? In other words, it's something for the future. Yeah. It's something that you have to work towards. Right? People will We're still, trying. No, people will still rely on fossil fuels for the time being. Right. right? right. And mm-hmm. We're still transitioning, right? We're transitioning. And so maybe that sense of urgency doesn't yeah. strike until exactly. a few years from now. Right. Yeah. But still, it's, part of, it's still part of the like, inflation pressure. 
Mm. What are there? What do you think are some other besides the gas, uh, the oil mm. prices? What are some other like inflationary pressures uh, going as on? As I mentioned earlier, food, uh, food mm. supply, supply chain, the issues, bottlenecks, right? Bottlenecks, mm-hmm. too much money circulating in the market. Labor Those shortage. Do you think that also affects inflation? I don't, I don't think there's labor shortage right now. Mm. Mm. And, and I think what's interesting right now is that maybe you guys know because you're a little bit younger than me. People are quitting, supposedly, because they're looking for work-life balance. Mm. I come from a generation, there is no work-life balance. Mm. <laughs> right? we, don't take, we don't take paternity. I feel like we can put right. a meme in here, too. Okay, so, boomer, right? <laughs> I am. I'm at the tail end of baby boomer. I, I am, look at the way I'm dressed. This, look at this. Blazer, blue shirt, khakis. Come on. This, this hey, is I have cool. a blazer on. That's look true. at Isaac. I got to dress like Isaac. He's dressed cool. Black yeah. jeans, black that's, that's oh, true. Yeah. jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bonus yeah. points for you, Isaac. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm married. sitting here. I married it, up. My like wife does age? it. Mm-hmm. Oh no, no, we don't do that. Okay. No, no. <laughs> oh, no ageism, please. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. <laughs> All right, guys. Should we take a short breather and then come back and continue on this conversation? Because there is, I guess, bigger questions that potential investors might be interested in. Like, what's really moving markets? Yeah. Where are we headed? Major loaded questions like that. We've got more coming up right here on Why Not Talk About Money with Lena, Isaac, Nari, and Bruce. Download the Arirang Radio app on your device for free. It's Arirang. A R I R A N G Radio. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Arirang Radio's uh, pilot. Why not money? <laughs> We're talking about what's moving markets next because I think this is a loaded set of questions because it's we're talking about yeah. ways of expanding our uh, investment portfolios because this is a future in the face of inflation. What else do you do but to diversify your portfolio and hope that you make passive income along the way? All right. To start things off, Bruce, we have to talk about, I want to say, second biggest market in the world. That's right. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about China, why it matters. Okay. First of all, uh, ni hao, ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao, ni hao. Ni hao ma. Woman shi han guo ren. Okay, anyway, that's all I know. So, <laughs> that's it. That's it. I can't wait until Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year so I can say kung hei fa choi. That's, can- <laughs> that's Cantonese, by the way. Kong shi gong shi. Okay, putong wa. That's pretty good. Now, uh, thank you. So, chi- China. China matters because China matters. Like Nina, you said it's the second largest economy in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And now it's getting more interesting because it's now in a cold war, mm. whether we like to admit it or not, with the U.S. and its allies. Mm. And America is putting a lot of pressure on Korea to join the Quad. Right. Quad is an alliance between Japan, U.S., India, and Australia. Mm. And right now, uh, America is putting a diplomatic boycott on the Beijing Olympics, which yep. I don't think that's cool, man. You know, Olympics, Olympics are Olympics. The Olympics. So Olympics are yeah. a separate issue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Korea wisely said, no, we're going to go. Right. Mm. You know, Korea exports a lot of s- semiconductor chips, right? right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you look at their exports, right, uh, 75% of their chips go to China. Mm. So you, they have to take China very seriously, and it's a balancing act, mm. right? Is that right? 75%? It's, very, wow. it's more than wow. 50%. It's more mm. than 50%, mm. right? So you have to be very mm. careful about that. They yeah. have to, the government has to be. So they're doing a really good balancing job right now. So mm. I don't know who's going to be the next president, but he's going to have to do the same thing next year. The balancing act between balancing the act. U.S. Yeah. and right. China tensions. That's right. So a lot of people are saying, you got to join the Quad, right? Mm. Then you have to change the name of the Quad. What do you call it? <laughs> The, the pent. Five? The, the pent. pent. The penthouse. Pent is, <laughs> the pent isn't cool. The quad is cool. <laughs> That's right? a penta here. No, pent is cool. Oh, no, no, it's not cool. Quad is cool. Okay? <laughs> Instead right? of the pentagon, yeah. the penta here. Right. Right. Oh, dear. Quad a quad. Doesn't sound good. Anyway, quad so, plus one. Exactly. So, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. We'll go with that. Yeah. So, quad plus. Uh, quad plus. Quad yeah. plus. <laughs> now, let's look at Chinese snacks. Okay. okay. So, early this year, Chinese internet stocks started mm-hmm. the year on a really positive note, okay, positive foot, but have since become the world's worst investments this year, 2021. They lost more than 33% of their value since the beginning of this year. Now, when Chinese tech stocks started tanking this summer, if you remember, Korean tech stocks fell with it, mm-hmm. right? I won't mention any names, but everyone mm-hmm. will know. And so the one obvious thing is to look for is the regulatory pressure to stop. The reason for the bear market in China now is due to regulatory intervention. And, but, I li- I, but I also say, don't hold your breath for this to stop. Now, there are two reasons, okay? Two scenarios, actually, mm-hmm. in my opinion. 
The most optimistic scenario is that this is happening for the 20th Communist Party Congress in October or November next year. Now, we don't like to use the C word, right? Mm -hmm. Or the S word, socialism. But basically, it's power politics. Mm -mm. And specifically, is to make sure Xi Jinping, the president of China, he has enough power to be reappointed as a, to a third term as the president of you know, the Communist Party. Right. Right? Then after that, things hopefully will go back to normal. And Chinese tech companies like Jack Ma of Alibaba, mm -hmm. he made huge faux pas. You know, he was basically putting down Chinese government officials and the government and their intervention regulation in front of Chinese government officials at seminars. And then quickly yeah. he did a 180 when he come, you know. Well, when when he, got, when he, he came, got everything taken away from him. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> like That's not right. so quickly, but well, you know, yeah. relative yeah. terms. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that was just a fresh reminder for yeah. anyone tuning mm -hmm. in from a democratic right. society saying like, right, like mm -hmm. Chinese market is a little different. They play by their yeah. own rules. It's very, yeah. it's oh, very they have different. rules now? Uh, well, they have their rules. <laughs> yeah, I, they, we just don't know what yeah, the rules they are. They have their yeah. rules. They're not yeah. Western rules, yeah. but they have their own rules and they have their own logic. Yeah. You know? So anyway, it's the other part of the story is that China is becoming more paternalistic. Okay? So the, stage, the state wants a much bigger control of the economy. And I've heard the analogy of the Rhine what, River. What was it before that it is now just turning paternalistic? <laughs> What happened was they needed to, like 20 years ago, no one knew anything about the internet. Mm -hmm. right? So j people like Jack Ma and other people were mm -hmm. running around and Chinese government's officials, you know, they have some very smart people there and said, we don't know what this is. Let's let them do this. Mm -hmm. Let's give them money. Then you had companies like Alibaba, Tencent, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. all these companies mm -hmm. getting more powerful. With government subsidies too. Yes. In China, you cannot be number one. The government is number one. Right. Yeah, Always. Right. The party is number one. There's your rule. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> makes sense. So, Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so you have to know your place. And these guys, they forgot their position mm -hmm. in, the, in the hierarchy, mm -hmm. right, in the food chain. Mm -hmm. So they're basically just talking too much, I think, and putting down the basically the group that supported them, mm -hmm. right? So now they're becoming more paternalistic. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. So what, that, okay. what does that mean? Let's look at the German Rhine River, River model, mm -hmm. right? Rhine River, Germany, right? Um, in other words, like the German model, there's going to be more government ownership and intervention. And so they're, they're going to be working on, focusing on more boring stuff like, I don't know, engineering, you know, building roads, infrastructure. infrastructure. Oh, so boring. And then they're, they're going to walk away from, you know, focusing on the, the glitzy consumer things to fritter away your time on smartphones. I want to ask Isaac, is it really this, is it fun, like the smartphone and this? I like how I'm like, singling you out. Yeah, I love my smartphone. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, you know what I hate is when I'm, I don't drive, so when I take the subway or the yeah. bus and I look at the person next to me and yeah. these old people playing these video games. You know? mm. Why does that Why bother does you, Bruce? Bother you? Interesting, <laughs> interesting. You should yeah. read a book. Oh, no, I'm serious. Read a book. Listen to how how retro. Listen to airy <laughs> rang how, how analog. Yeah, listen no. to a podcast. Listen to podcast. <laughs> you know, you, know, you yeah. could do both. You could be listening to a podcast and play the games. You know, I mean, is it just the game? How do you do that? How do you do that? How can you turn it on and listen to it? You can. Oh. You can really? Do it, yeah. You have to teach me. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of interesting things going on in China. But take China seriously. Take. The power politics between the U.S. and China very seriously. It's mm -hmm. really serious. So, if you look at the Chinese companies that have listed in Nasdaq, mm -hmm. they're delisting and going mm -hmm. back to Hong Kong and Shanghai. Uh. And Richard Lee, he's the chairman of uh, Chung Kong Holdings, one of the most. It's like the Samsung Electronics of Hong Kong. His mm -hmm. father is very famous, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Lee Ka Shing. He decided not to list this company, one of his companies in the U.S. He just he just decided a few days ago. They're probably going to list first quarter next year in Hong Kong. Is mm -hmm. this a new company or so his current? It, no, it's not Chung Kong. It's a company oh, that okay. it's like a startup that mm -hmm. they that were going to IPO. They were going to IPO and they in, decided, in the oh. US. Mm -hmm. but they said no more. So that's the trend now. Interesting. That's the trend now. It's and that's a strategy to, to list yeah. in Hong Kong? Yes, they decided. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a matter of timing. Sometime first quarter. All right. I, I have a question about the, the first, the optimistic scenario yes. that you mentioned. Yes. Um, like if he, how, how does this like... Uh, economy slowing down or how does this intervention like really help you know the president get his third term i don't think it has to do with economy okay. for that i think it has to show control of 
the media and the technology companies to show that you're still in control. Oh, okay. So it's like to show that he's the boss. He's the, it's power. It's power. Oh, okay, okay. Even if it means like, you know, the economy right now with all the um, the stock market, you know, the tech stocks going down, um, the real estate bubble, all this stuff that's kind of the, you know, linked to QE and inflation and all these things. It's power politics. It's just it's, wow. it's Machiavellian, real, right. real politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn. So I think it's better to take a short term hit from their point of view for medium term, long term control of the situation. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Brutal. That sounds brutal. It does, huh? I would actually like to know since we have been talking about stocks and what are the promising sectors that you, okay, because. Bruce has got some tips. We talked to him a little bit before <laughs> uh, before the podcast, and he had a bit of knowledge for us regarding, you know, stocks. Okay, so these are my personal opinions. This is not Arirang Radio's views or any of the mm -hmm. people here. So just personal. NFA, so, not financial advice. I am not a financial <laughs> advisor either. I don't do retail. I don't do retail. Okay. So... Most important thing, don't buy bonds for the time being. Mm. Now, don't buy bonds. Rates are going up. Done. Mm -hmm. okay. Focus on... I, know. I got to take notes. <laughs> don't even know what take they are. Notes. Check. No young, bonds. <laughs> young, young people should not buy bonds anymore. But what about existing bonds? Do I then just pull out? It depends when you, it, it depends right. on when you bought it. Right? Hoddle. It depends on the tenor, the, 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 right, the, the right, duration, right. that type right, of thing. Right. Coupon. Hoddle. Yeah. <laughs> so whether you bought treasuries or corporate bonds. Right, or right. So focus on stocks. And so... Um, don't be a genius and try to time the market. Done. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in um, buying every month. You know, on your payday, make mm -hmm. the money go out and buy funds or index funds or whatever stocks you're looking to buy. But I think you need to start buying now for the future. For, you, know, you need. I know so many really, really smart people. Maybe some of them are listening now. I berate them. Is that a big word, berate? <laughs> I berate them for being... Just having cash, okay? And remember, people, cash is trash. Cash is trash. Cash, cash is, is trash. 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 All right. <laughs> so if you have trash that you need, you can send it to me. Um, mm -hmm. My bank account I number also take trash. is... <laughs> this is so funny. Give me crypto. I'll take digital, okay? Uh. Oh, man. Oh, crypto. You guys are, you guys are old. Cash. Uh. What are you talking about? Let's go digital. So I think what you should do is you got to look around and you got to see what, like, what's out there. You don't have to be a genius, okay? He keeps on saying that you don't have to be a genius, but this is like one of the most terrifying things for a first-time investor. Mm. Exactly. You know, you want to invest, but where do you start? Nari, for, for the first-time investor, if you're really scared, mm -hmm. buy index funds, mm. right? You could buy okay. the stuff here in Korea or you could buy S&P 500 mm. index funds. Index funds move with the market, so you make no decision. And the amount of money that you pay is really small, mm -hmm. and the management fee is like 0.03%. <laughs> but this goes against your be brave, be bold tip yeah. approach. Before, yeah. before you can be brave and bold, you have to become familiar, right? Mm. So familiarity uh. does not breed contempt. It's the complete opposite. It makes you feel a little bit better. Okay, so this yeah. is like warming your, yeah. getting your, uh, right. getting your feet wet right. with date, funds. date before you ask oh. your partner. To oh yes, date engaged. before marriage. Oh, okay. No, date before getting engaged. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So, so be vigilant and connect the dots. Right? Get the phone number before the date. You know, like yeah. Phone what? Number. Phone what, number. what is this metaphor? <laughs> phone I don't, is that the right process? I don't know. Get oh. the phone number? Is that like get the right information? So oh, you text years. now. Ex, oh, I think you you're older now. than me. I think uh, <laughs> you dress cooler than me, but you're older than me, man. He's an old soul. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. So um, one sector that I really like, mm -hmm. EV battery makers. Ooh. EV battery makers. Now, you're going to go, go Tesla. And I'm going to go, all right, if you bought it early this year or last year. Mm. But the stock price has gone up, I don't know how many folds, right? Yeah. I don't know how Tesla's going to do going forward. I don't know how much more is going to go up. Mm. Uh -huh. Elon Musk is a genius. I admit it. Okay? I missed that trade too because I, I, thought, he was, I thought he was weird. Like, he was smoking stuff during hey, the radio interview. I told you. It yeah. can be both. <laughs> um, so what I like to recommend are companies that supply batteries to Tesla and companies like Tesla. Mm -hmm. And Korea's homegrown companies. Excellent. Among top five globally. Okay? Yeah, domestic. Yeah, so this company has not gone public yet. It used to be part of LG Chemical, but they're going to spin off mm. first quarter next year. 
LG Energy Solution, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And then Samsung SDI. They're among the top five, six EV battery makers in the world, right? And they're aggressively building factories mm -hmm. uh, in the United States, good politically as well. So LG has tied up with GM, General mm -hmm. Motors, Samsung with Ford. And mm -hmm. LG, they're already starting uh, building their third factory in the United States, mm -hmm. Tennessee, I think. Mm -hmm. They love Tennessee mm -hmm. for some reason. And I think with continuing U.S. and China trade tensions, I think Korean battery makers will uh, be able to sell more batteries. Mm -hmm. okay? mm. And another thing that you have to keep, keep in mind is that California, right? We've all been, Isaac, you went to yeah, school I'm from there, UCLA, right? Yeah, I'm from Cali. So last year, Southern Cali or? Northern? Southern Cali, yeah. Really? Yeah. You look like a Northern Cali. Guy. I'm oh, a Northern Cali. You. Really? Yeah. She looks posh. She's still <laughs> Northern Cali, okay? So Southern California state government said, starting from 2025, no more gas cars. Right. We only mm -hmm. sell EV cars, yep. right? And please keep in mind, California, if they become independent, if they secede from the union, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> if they secede, they'll be the seventh wealthiest country in wow. the world. Yeah. That's big. Korea is number 11, number mm -hmm. 11, number 12. So to put that in perspective. Just one state. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just one state. And I'm sure that other states will follow. That's the trend right now. Like going back to what Nadi said earlier about ESG and climate and yeah. Yeah. being a good citizen, that type of thing. Whatever the case, I mean, these are these are solid tips that, you know, come from Bruce and Bruce, Bruce himself. <laughs> um, however, we can't kind of talk about this stocks right without talking about cryptocurrency that's right you know yeah. we started kind of on cryptocurrency and i feel like it's fitting to end on end on it i guess sounds good yeah let's not say crypto let's say digital assets sure crypto sounds weird like not something from the crypt something so from the grave <laughs> yeah cryptic, so cryptic right so cryptic right? a lot of brucisms today yeah. I was gonna that say. i kind of love i do too erudite baby but anyway <laughs> so isn't it funny how all the doomsayers, naysayers are old men? You know, they always say it's going to die. It's going to, it's nothing. It's mm -hmm. going to go to zero. And as you know, Koreans, especially younger Koreans, or those young at heart, like Isaac, have been quite <laughs> active players in digital currency. A lot of people don't notice, but like globally, 25% of various digital currency exchanges are in Korea. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that, right. but Korea is big. So yeah. people outside listening to this should look at Korea. Korea leads in many sectors, not yeah. just technology, but also in digital assets. So I think digital uh, currency will keep its role as a, a safe haven. And that probably means it can go higher because its market capitalization is still only a fraction of what gold is. And I, I have no idea what the equilibrium price is. I have no idea. So I can't tell you how high it will go. But if you talk about Bitcoin, which everyone loves, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a coin cap on Bitcoin. There's only like 20 million coins that have been be that be mined. And I think investors have already mined like 18 million. So there's a limit. So that's why prices are going up, mm. right? Because limited supply. Mm -hmm. um, so you may want to look at a little bit less popular, but still established coins like Ethereum. Mm. Okay, Do Dogecoin, Dogcoin, I, don't, I, have no, I have no idea. <laughs> to the moon! Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> and so, But I think that uh, it's safe to say that with all the noise and controversy, obscure the the rise of the digital asset ecosystem in general. I know people like to use that ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. I'm really convinced that DeFi, just decentralized finance, that means banks with digital capital can take deposits and make loans, but have no employees, that's the future. And you can see that now in Korea. In Korean commercial banks, they're closing mm -hmm. down a lot of branches. Yep. They're hiring a lot of tech, uh, FinTech guys, mm -hmm. you know, computing guys, algorithm mm -hmm. guys. If you want a job now, like in, if you work, I'm not going to mention the major U.S. Wall Street banks. They're kids right out of college, computer uh, science. Uh, Everyone's going into fintech. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Three hundred to five hundred thousand mm. dollars starting packages at age mm. 22, 23. And you could dress like Isaac. Wow. You don't dress like me, right? Uh, and so that's really important. And mm. I, I and I think that's real. So how it will develop and how it'll be regulated are huge mysteries. In fact. If you want more institutional investors to go cryptocurrency long, digital assets, you need more regulations, actually, yeah. to, mm. peep, to keep people feel safe. You have to do mm. a yeah, that's, a huge, that, that's one of the biggest problems. People don't feel like it's, it's safe. safe. Yeah. 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 That's why what I always say is stick to the big name coins, like mm -mm. Uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum or some of the more famous ones. There are 16,000 uh, different, different uh, listed coins out there globally. Okay? And, I, and, I'll, and I'll talk about that in one second. But now, 
how it's going to be regulated, again, is it's a mystery, but digital assets are going to be a ser serious disruptor of traditional asset classes. So I think that investors, all of us, to follow the market and mm -hmm. to be feel, feel a little bit safe, I think we should buy a little bit of it. Mm. Not go 100% in, but maybe anywhere from 0.5% to 5%, depending on your risk appetite of your portfolio. Okay, Again, stick with the big names mm -hmm. where you could uh, safeguard it and trade it and make sure that you're not going to get Yes, date get before hacked. getting engaged. But didn't right. the Korean government also say that they're going to start you know, taxing uh, you know, for Bitcoin earnings? I mean, isn't that kind of a major... There was a lot of talk about that this yeah. summer. Yeah. Right, there's right, a lot yeah. of back and forth. Has there been an update? I, I think it's still a work in progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you know, this is very new. It's very new. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not going to do what like, China did. China said no right. digital assets, yeah. right? That just, but just didn't no really, mining, no, no nothing. Mining. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. didn't really affect the market, right? Mm -hmm. It did, but then went back up again, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, and this is, this is, I have concerns though, okay? Um, a recent survey in the UK revealed that almost half of respondents between 18 and 29, they chose dip to, uh, digital assets as their first ever investment. Okay. Which is fine. That's cool. And a number of these transactions, however, were made using credit cards, student loans, or they just took out Okay. Going to, going to debt to buy these. That's right. Yeah. That's, not right. Good. That's not good. So more than uh, half the respondents, um, they invested in either Bitcoin or Dogecoin or Dogecoin. And Doge. you know, they funded Doge their... Because of I'm Elon. Joking. I know. I'm <laughs> the I'm genius. Just, I'm just jealous. He's the richest. <laughs> he can take it. He can take it. Uh, you know, they funded their investment with debt. Now, the IMF is concerned, too. They did their annual Global Financial Stability Report, and they said that there's more than 16,000 tokens that have been listed worldwide, yeah. but only 9,000 remain today, hmm. okay? And for the other 7,000... That, that's like in a matter of, what, months? Uh, like no, Years, a few years, okay. several oh, years. Okay. Okay. Now, out of these 7,000, mm -hmm. right, some developers have simply just walked away, right? Other tokens, they just don't trade. People lost interest. And, or some are just scams. Yeah. All right, scams. The BTS scam. coin. What? Yeah. 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 I heard about ridiculous. the Squid Game coin. The BTS coin was very quickly dethroned as right, illegitimate. Right. Oh, yeah. wow. But what I want to say is I think it's a real asset class. It's mm -hmm. gone over into the retail sector. Mm -hmm. And digital currency is not going away. And mm -hmm. this year, uh, 2021, VCs, venture capitalists, they invested $30 billion in cryptocurrency digital asset startups. That's a lot of money. Mm. Mm. So VC is smart money. Mm -hmm. You know, you could disagree, but they're usually ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah I don't think anyone would disagree with you. It's just mm. uh, there is so much, like, caution when it comes to just Yeah, and with all the news, assets. like, especially, like, in Korea, right, with the what they said, like, are they going to follow, like, China? Are they going to do mm. this? Are they going to start taxing? And mm. a lot of questions. Mm. Um yeah, I'm I think it's going to be on the back burner because we have presidential elections coming up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, if you want to be president, I don't think you're going to sit around talking about how we're going to tax Bitcoin. <laughs> for the time yeah, there. it's not a popular right? issue. Right? Yeah. And then we have inflation problems. We need to grow the economy by 3.1 percent. Yeah, you know, we're going to yeah. tax you is probably not a way for a popular vote. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> no, it isn't. I agree. I can't believe we ran out of time. Um, oh, really? We did, but I do. I do want to ask you. So. Compared to, just in your own personal opinion, Bruce, so compared to other like financial, like big financial crises moments, um, how have, how do you think we fared just overall? And when I say we, I mean, maybe Korea mm -hmm. um, with like the whole pandemic and everything going on. Mm -hmm. How are we doing compared, like compared to previous years okay, and so, previous crises? Right. So... The first crisis, crisis that maybe most of you are familiar with in 1998, mm. in, for the listeners out there, for those who don't know Korea, they call it the IMF crisis mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, Korea received a $57 billion bailout around this time in 1997 over Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that just caused huge havoc in Korean society, it turned it upside down. A lot of sad things happened. A lot of people yeah. lost jobs, right? Mm -hmm. But Korea quickly paid back that, that several, a few years later. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were really impressed by what Koreans did. They said, Koreans lined up to give gold coin, uh, gold rings and things like mm. that, jewelry to the government. I said, yeah, yeah. They said, you guys wouldn't do that. I said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep it. Right? <laughs> so that shows you Korea's uh, really positive quality. You know, yeah. Caring for uh, the nation, the country's society. Society, that's right. whole. So, I saw in 1998 in September, the Cosby plummet to 220 points, 
Hard to imagine that. Yeah. It's like 3,000 now, right? Yeah. So all you needed to do back then was buy a couple of stocks and you'd be really rich right now. Mm -hmm. and, I, and the exchange rate, it went up to like 2,000 to a dollar, one US dollar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I remember. Do you remember yeah. that? Mm -hmm. yep. You could stay at five-star hotels for $100 a night. So it was a really, really bad time. Mm -hmm. Then if we fast forward like 10 years to uh, the global financial crisis when the subprime, American yeah. real estate, you know. Mm -hmm. 2008? 2008, oh, okay. mm -hmm. right? Korea took a hit, but one good thing was that Koreans, Korean institutions, investors didn't really have a lot of exposure to subprime, you know, CDOs, fortunately, mm -hmm. right? So Korea was able to get through that. So the big thing last year was when the market plummeted in March because of COVID. COVID. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were saying, oh, this is a, uh, you know, another financial crisis like mm. that in 2008 and 1998. Actually, my first um, appearance on Arirang was on the broadcasting side to talk about this. I'm sorry, right? do you mean Arirang? Oh, Arirang, sorry. <laughs> uh, I was trying to westernize it, Arirang, right? I'm just um, kidding. <laughs> so what I said was, it's, it's not a financial crisis. It's mm -hmm. just a crisis in confidence. And it was proven right. I said, you should go in and buy stocks. And one month later, the stock jumped up. Jumped, yep. and it went up 30-some percent. Yeah, I heard about this. So he came out, and he, he made some predictions, and they all came true. Yeah. <laughs> so is this all lining up to you ask about next year's predictions? <laughs> no, no, no. I just wanted to see like what he thought about how we we're doing, just, yeah. you know, just generally as a country. So Korea, I think, uh, was a leader mm -hmm. in terms of contact tracing, in terms of testing. Yep. I've never heard... U.S. government officials talking so much about Korea. They would always say, you know, like what Korea did, like what the Moon administration did. So, you know, big applause to mm -hmm. the Korean government. Obviously, we have to keep this up. We have to worry about Omicron, people getting vaccinated, yep. mm -hmm. um, people wearing masks, being more considerate. And my heart really goes out to the mom and pop store owners. Yeah. So I really yeah. don't know what to do. I mean, well, they're, they're in a lot of pain. So yeah. we need to help them out. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to criticize the government, yeah. but I think that you have to be empathetic and sympathetic to everyone involved. But overall, I think Korea's have, Korea and Koreans have done a, just a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. You know, that's for the first time in a long time, a positive feedback I got about it, because we are really quick to make criticisms about where we fell short. Mm -hmm. And that's what news programs are designed to do. But right. this is really refreshing, Bruce. And this is really important. Koreans are really good at circling the wagon. That's the old mm. uh, uh, Western movie term. When we're in trouble, we do well when we're in a crisis. And we just need to maintain that once we get out of it. Mm. But so in a crisis mode, that's mm -hmm. when you see the best of Korea and best of Koreans. That's something that the outside world can look towards Korea uh, mm. for leads, for example, for hope. Like, I, I would love to just wrap it on that really positive note. Um, thank you, Bruce, for it, being here with us. Not at all. It was my pleasure. I hope that we can do this again uh, sometime next year. <laughs> yeah. This is a pilot. Uh, I, and I would love to talk about, we could talk about Blackpink, Blackpink and Baba Boo next time if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for having me. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. It's been great fun. I learned so much. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Happy holidays. Yes, and that means we are done with our four episodes of the pilot. Why not talk about blank? <laughs> for now, at least, happy holidays from all of us here. Uh, I'm Nari. I'm Lena. And I'm Isaac. And I'm Bruce. Money, money, money. Money. <laughs> money. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy Bye holidays. for now, everyone.